It's the the school of hard knocks, learning by doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was taught to never quit learning. Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. All right, so welcome to this episode of Eco Why. So these were our, the episodes that we enjoy the most where we sit down with our heroes and we get to know a little bit more about them. With us today, we have our solution architect, who is Kansas Sorsonen, who we typically go by K. And we are love to sit down and, and just talk and learn a little bit more about Kay and, and his role, uh, the things that, that he's challenged with uh, here at ECO and things that he's seen in his past. So, Kay, just to kind of kick us off, tell us a little bit about your journey uh, to the role that you're in right now. Well, hi, Chris, and thank you. Uh, so, as you mentioned, I'm the solution architect here at Electrical Equipment Company, also known as ECO. I've been here with the company for almost three years, almost my anniversary. So I'll be expecting some prizes and gifts and stuff like that. It's in the mail. Okay, okay. But yeah, prior to that, I was uh, working as a controls engineer, as also Eco's customer. You know, this this role was presented to me by our product manager. You know, and, and of course, he was telling me about the project that our our COO had, the idea of helping people, and it, it kind of just struck an interest right away, right? Prior to that, I was doing maintenance engineering at a pharmaceutical company just about everywhere. Uh, my past life, I was a, a welder, and the life before that, I did HVAC, so... And then my life before that, I, I was working on cars. I still do. That's my hobby. But a lot of different background in terms of what I do and, and how I got here. That's pretty cool, Kay. So you spent a lot of time out in the industry, you know, working directly with engineers, end users, helping them. What do you see as some of the greatest challenges that industry has over the next, you know, five years? A lot of it is getting their plants modernize for what's coming you know it could be anything from a product to their network infrastructure it could be as simple as planning right uh, assessing their current systems plants aren't equipped with staff engineers and a, a large group like they are back in the days right so having the bandwidth and resource to go do these types of studies or cataloging uh, or just other resources has been the biggest challenge I've seen out in the uh, field. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I'm sure you've had a lot of mentors, you know, that you've worked with over the years. You know, what's a piece of advice you wish someone would have told you when you entered this industry, you know, years ago? Well, don't go into this industry and <laughs> go be a doctor or something uh, or, or follow your dream. Go be a pilot. Yeah. Hey. Uh, but no, uh, I've had some real good mentors uh, from my past experience. Anything from teaching you, right? The scoring you. It's the, the school of hard knocks, learning by doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was taught to never quit learning. That's the biggest thing that I've taken. Never stop learning. Never think you know more than the rest. But one of the things that I wish they would have told me was, you know, the, and they may not have known, the, the vast and diverse world that's out there to prepare for that. And again, a lot of my mentors were, were a little bit more old-fashioned, so I don't think they had the insight into what the future was bringing. But had I uh, been capable of going back to mentor my own self was 
just to prepare to expand more than just focusing on a single item, you know, to, to, to really fully understand that everything is connected. Right. You know, part of the reason we do Eco S Y and is, is, is to just build community and to bring hope to a lot of our listeners. A lot of our listeners are working in the industrial plants that we serve. And when they hear the, you know, you have an interesting title. Your title is Solution Architect. Sounds really cool, right? So if if you were to give that young engineer, he or she may be out there listening to this podcast right now, and, and, and they want to pursue a career like yours. They want to be um, the next Solution Architect uh, out there in industry. What advice would you give them? I would say listen, right? Because when you're listening... Uh, instead of talking, you get more out of everything. We can process things a little bit better and, and have a better understanding. A, a lot of times we're quick to jump. As soon as we hear something, we jump and not fully understanding what the application is or what the overall goal is, right? Or what that person is trying to convey to us. So if you're out there listening, I would definitely say, you know, work on that interpersonal communication skill. Make sure you fully understand what your peer, your coworker, or your boss is asking you before being impulsive and, and moving in a direction that's not really what they really wanted. Right, right. That's very good. So from a training standpoint, to, to be a solution architect, you know, what does that training look like to, to get you to the point that you are today? Well, you know, when when you're looking solution architect up online, it deals a lot with network. That's really where the term came from, where you're building out, designing network infrastructure. My role is a little bit different in terms of not only is it network related, we're, we're building actual solutions for everyday customers, right? And what that entails is keeping up with technology. Just like our current customer base now, uh, unless they're actually going out looking for a specific device, they may not know newer technology uh, have emerged, right? So part of my job is to take that initiative to actually go digging in, searching web, searching white paper, understanding what the next big trend is coming out. You know, looking at the overall market will we'll determine which path is going to be the biggest, biggest hit. Right. You're a pretty passionate guy. So in your day-to-day, when do you feel the most fulfilled or the happiest? You know, Chris, this this is a, one of the biggest things that, that keeps me driving is when I'm able to accomplish a task that's been set and helping a customer. It's really the most satisfying thing that I, that I could go home and be proud, right? Uh, you know, it, it may kick my ass for two weeks, but if I could accomplish a certain task that me, myself, or a customer has set out, it's one of the best feeling in the world. Makes you feel good. Oh, yeah. Do you have any stories? Yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of things out there out in the field that I go through day-to-day basis. You know, I lack a lot of knowledge in different aspects of of different components, right? And this is one of the challenges where I'm saying you got to keep up with technology. Me and a customer, we've installed a couple of uh, power monitoring equipment, and we're having connection loss. So, what we did was we pulled out all the tools and went through every single component that we could in the process that we should, and we was able to find the bug that caused the communication loss, right? Had we not had the proper tools or, or the insight, uh, it had been a very difficult process to find. So basically, web connections to device and components were dropping left and right, we utilize a, a cable certification tool, a DSX 8000, made sure the cable in was good. 
We did some scannings. We did some some additional testing, work with their IT folks, and everything solved. The customer's happy. They're grateful that they utilized this new component. They're able to use the information to help their business processes. Wow, that's a great story, man. I, I bet that really made you just connected all the dots for you right yes. there. Yes. Yeah. So what about projects for the future? What what's get what's where do you what excites Kay when he's looking to the future and, and the way things are changing? So as as we move forward with projects and stuff, uh, you know, us here at Eco have defined specific projects that we're working on. Focus on mainly helping customers, right? One of the uh, biggest thing is is integration to different components. We like building up solution and guides to help customer achieve that task without really putting a burden on them. For instance, you know, we have a couple of solutions out now where we've got guides integrating your Skawa VFDs into a Rockwell platform, Eaton power distribution components into a Rockwell platform. We're working on some power monitoring. This is full, large enterprise level items. You know, anything that could help a customer achieve their goal, their business objective. We look at the patterns and we'll determine what we could do internally to help them out. Right. That sounds like you got some neat things going. You, you've, uh, you know, I've been in some meetings with you lately where we We've talked about augmented reality. Where do you see that fit in that for industrials in the future? Augmented reality for the industrial sector right now is somewhat at an infancy state. Now, that being said, the technology has existed and are heavily invested in, in development. If you're aware of, you know, simple things such as the Pokemon game, right? That is a augmented reality type of application. So you're seeing things that are not really there. In the industrial sector, I see it really moving forward because uh, it allows technicians, engineers, just to walk out there with either a phone or a tablet or even a, a, a halo glass, right? Augmented reality glass and look at a machine or an asset, you know, scan it and bring up virtually all the information that they ever needed. Well, how does this help out? Well, it, it frees up your hand, right? So you may look at a tablet. You, you don't have to have a clipboard and a pencil. Just click away. Uh, you know, it, it improves the process times, uh, but it also gives you real time data into determine if that equipment is actually functioning up to specification or not. Additionally, what we have seen is augmented reality in the industrial sector is reporting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're able to get information to and from a whole lot quicker instead of a, a long paper trail, okay? Because if we walk up and scan, say, a QR code, everything is there. We can access everything documentations, and all that information are sent directly to the server where everything gets processed. So yeah, uh, augmented reality in the industrial sector, you can almost, uh, it's a best bet to believe it's coming. Yeah, we've even seen applications where uh, users were using it for maintenance, right? Correct. That, that, that looks pretty neat. So you walk up to this piece of equipment and kind of gives you the breakdown of this is the tools you need, this is this bolt here, this bolt there, right, from, from mm -hmm. that standpoint. Yeah, so different different application will have different types of functionality. Obviously, you know, if you're looking at military grade stuff, you have exploded views of all parts break down, and, and that will trickle down into the industrial sector. But main thing uh, is... You know, all the information is there right there visually on the spot without having to go and search for these types of information from, you know, six different systems. So uh, it makes the maintenance process. So if it's a daily checklist, 
instead of having 99 items to check off, they can walk up, scan it, everything looks good, go to the next. So for instance, a typical eight hour days of a, of a manual route, may end up being two hours. So they got freed up six hours to go do whatever they need to do. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about you a little bit. So give us some hobbies. What, what do you enjoy to do outside of uh, being a, a genius solution architect? Well, uh, I like fishing. Uh, I like working on cars. Okay. You know, uh, two weeks ago, I, I'm an outdoors guy. I was just got back from uh, snowboarding, so... Is there anything you don't do, Kay? Uh, there's there's quite a <laughs> bit of stuff, but uh, I, I tend to be pretty active out there. Uh, now, what kind of cars are you working on? I do a lot of import racing. Okay. So, uh, modified imports for uh, higher horsepower and embarrass those uh, U.S. Uh, muscle cars, so <laughs> those that are listening. So, to, is that drag racing? Drag racing and track. And track. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like a... Uh, Road course. Road course, yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Fishing is my other thing, so. Now, you do ice fishing, too, right? I do ice fishing, lake, yeah. Try to try to experience it all. Experience it all. That is awesome, man. Life is short, right? <laughs> experience it all. <laughs> Anything outside, it sounds like you're pretty happy. Yeah. Um, like I said, the the role that I'm in allows me to to be happy at work, and when I get home, I'm able to be happy and do what I like doing. Well, that's great, man. That's great. Uh, so if you could take a step in, into my shoes, what would you have asked yourself that I haven't? Well, it's kind of late. Are you hungry because I'm <laughs> buying lunch? Or How does that sound? <laughs> yeah. No, I think you covered everything. Uh, one of the things I'd probably ask if I was you is uh, – you know, it, being a part of uh, electrical equipment company, how how is that affecting the job process and and what we're doing? Well, you know, and, and I could go ahead and say that it's a close knit type family uh, feeling. So yeah, it, it makes coming to work fun. That's great, man. That's great. Do you listen to any podcasts? Uh, I have not um, because I'm overworked and. Uh, <laughs> Well, but, I did, I'm going back to your previous statement about the, the good work family, so we're not going to worry about okay, that, that okay. good work stuff. How about books? Were any good books lately? Uh, no. Uh, the only books that I'm able to read is the uh, eight, 900-page instruction manuals that uh, that I didn't translate <laughs> down to, to 20 for customers. Right. The people can actually yes. use it, right? Yes. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, Kay, it, it's been a pleasure. Uh, other than... Who do you think we should interview? Who else would you like to see us interview here on Eco Ask Why? I, you know, Eco Ask Why because the program that that I'm in now was derived from this mastermind. I'd, I'd say Mr. Jeff Knight would be a good candidate. All right. Yeah. Well, we're, uh, we we do have we're, we're trying to get on his schedule, and, and we'll make that happen. Great. So that that will probably the first pat prod was it podcast that i would listen to right because it's very uh very interesting subject there very good well kay thank you so much for your time for all your insight this has been a pleasure thank you Chris. yes sir thank you for listening to eco ask why this show is supported ad free by electrical equipment company eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.